Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I'm the audio sorcerer. In today's video, we're going to talk about a new feature that uh, Pro Tools just released in their 2020.3 release, and it's called Track Folders. Now, Track Folders are absolutely amazing. There's no other way to say it. Um, they're going to help you guys um, clean up your sessions from an organizational standpoint, and then also make them just a lot easier to get through. It's going to be a lot easier to find tracks and such. Now, I've been waiting for this release ever since I heard it was coming out, so I'm super excited about it. So in this video, I'm going to show you um, four important things you need to know about uh, how track folders work. And of course, I'll show you how to use them. So before we get to the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So let's get to the video. All right, so here we are on Pro Tools, and uh, we are going to talk about the new track folders that were released in the new 2020.3 update from Pro Tools. Uh, these are going to make people's lives so much easier that have large sessions, and honestly, even smaller sessions, because we all like organization. So this tutorial is going to be kind of short, and in this tutorial, I just want to talk about four things that I think are important when using track folders. And the first two are gonna be part of the same group, and that's actually the folder types. So with that being said, number one is basic folders. So when working with basic folders, the first thing you have to do is actually create the folder. And that is done the same way as creating a track. So if we go up to the track tab up here, click there and go to new, we'll open our new tracks window here. Now, I like to use shortcuts to do this, and again, that is uh, Control-Shift-N on a PC and Command-Shift-N on a Mac. So if you go to the track type here and click the down arrow, you'll see that we have uh, new folder options at the top here. And we're talking about the basic folder, so let's create that. And you'll see that there's very small uh, options available for this. Um, you can give it a name. We'll just keep it folder for now. Uh, so let's actually create one of those. All right, so this is what a basic folder looks like here. There are no inserts, there are no sends. There is simply a mute and solo. This is a audio indicator letting you know audio is coming through. Uh, this is the MIDI indicator letting you know MIDI coming through. And you could put audio and MIDI tracks both in the same folder. And this is used down here to expand or collapse all your tracks. Now we don't have anything in here yet, but uh, I'll show you how that works. So to actually add tracks to your folder, um, let's just grab all my synths here. And you're just going to highlight them all and then drag them right on in. So you'll see now that they're actually part of this folder here. It kind of has a grouping around them here, this blue grouping. Now, if I wanted to close this uh, folder here and hide these, I would just hit this. See, they're all gone now. And then if I want to see them again, I just click it again. So you can imagine how beneficial that's going to be for uh, organization on large sessions. Now, if I play this here, I can actually still solo and mute all these as a group. So let's actually play this. All right, so I'm just kind of muting things in and out there so you can uh, you know, see that this actually does work. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to basic track folders. Um, so the next thing we want to talk about are the routing folders. All right, so let's create a routing folder. So let's open up your track tab and let's go to track type, choose routing folder. Uh, we'll just leave it on the default for now. Let's go to create. All right, so a routing folder looks pretty much just like a regular track. It's actually got a full IO section. It's got your insert sends, um, all your panning, solo mute and volume control. So this is basically used for um, replacing an aux track, to be honest, because it does everything an aux track does, but you can organize your tracks within it, which is fantastic. I, I think it's gonna completely replace an aux track short of using the aux track for you know, effects like reverb and delay. So what I would probably use this on would be uh, a drum bus, for example. This would be my drum bus. So I have all these drums here, um, so I can just drag them all into here. Let's highlight those. Drag them on over. Cool, so they're now part of my folder here, and we can tell by collapsing and reopening it here. Now, 
for track folder, we actually need to route through this like as an aux. So you see that I don't have this currently routed there. This says it's folder 1.3. That says it's my IO. So let's see where that's available at. So you can see it's down here. So I can change all of these over to there. So let's do that here. Now, if you want to change all of your uh, outputs uh, at one time, you can hold down Alt and then do that, and it will change all these at one time. And of course, we just want to change this group here. So now you'll see that I have these routed to my uh, routing folder here. So if I play now, you're going to see the drums come through here. So as you can see, I had full solo and mute control of all my drums in my routing folder. And uh, what's really nice about this, again, is that we can actually put processing up here and treat this as a drum bus because most people like to do some sort of processing on the drum bus. Um, so, I mean, again, I don't see why we would want to use aux tracks much anymore short of using them for reverb and delays. This, this you know, combines all the great things of aux tracks, but with some organization. And uh, I mean, that's that's going to make my session so much more clean, so much better, so much smoother. It's going to make everybody's life so much easier. So that was the second thing I wanted to talk about. The third thing is converting aux tracks into folder tracks. So let's do that next. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order for me to show you how to convert an aux track to a folder um, we need to create an aux track. So let's do that first. I'm going to make a stereo aux track here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put my bases into here. I have a uh, high and low base here. So I'm going to treat these as one. So let's do that. Let's actually put, uh, this is input five and six. We'll just keep it simple for now. And we'll wrap this to five and six and we'll wrap this to five and six. And of course we also need to route this out to my pre-master track. So we can actually hear it. Um, so now this is all in order here. Now to convert an aux track, we just need to simply go to the aux track, right click, and then we need to go to uh, convert aux to routing folder. Bam, how easy was that? <laughs> so I know that we have many pre-existing sessions that existed before this update came out. So this is how we're gonna be able to convert those aux tracks into uh, folder tracks and keep all of our routing intact. So I should mention though that we have this created and it keeps the routing in place. We actually have to drag in our tracks to the folder even though we converted the aux track. So let's drag that on in. And there, now it's actually part of the folder track. Even though our tracks were outside of the folder, they still would have routed to it because of our, our routings intact for it. So just so you know that. So let me actually collapse that. So the uh, last thing I want to talk about is the three different ways that you actually put tracks into a folder. So let's get to that. Okay, so the first way to actually add a track to a folder is the way I've been showing you, and that's just simply by dragging that track onto the folder. So if we use the click track as an example, again, I'll just drag that onto aux1 here, and you'll see now that it is part of aux1's folder. And let me take it out of there for the next example. Okay, so it's on its own again. So the second way is to go up to your little tracks tab here. Let's take the click track here. Let's actually drag it onto the aux1 here. And then again, now it's added into there, as you can see by me closing and opening it. Okay, let me take it out of there. Now the last way to add a track to a track folder is simply by right-clicking on it, and then going to Move To, and then going to uh, one of the track folders here. So we could put it in the aux one as we've been doing. So let's do that. And there you go, now it's all in there. And a cool little extra tip I wanna mention is that you can actually click on the track folder and hit uh, Shift F. And this will uh, toggle between opening the folder and closing the folder here. So uh, you got a little shortcut key for that. Now one interesting thing that I almost forgot to put in this tutorial, so I'm putting in at the end here, is actually what your edit window looks like with folders. So um, a good thing to look at would be the one we created for our drums. So I have a lot of um, audio samples that I have um, kind of looped up this way. And uh, you can see where all my 
edits are within the waveforms with all these little individual lines here. Now, the cool thing is you could actually um, modify and move things around in this folder view. So if I was to highlight, say, this passage here, you can hit uh, Control-D or Command-D uh, to actually duplicate something. So let me do that. And you'll see that I duplicated this whole entire passage here. So let me undo that because I didn't want to do that. But, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting that you can kind of see it in this view here. And again, you can, you know, shrink your view by just doing this. And you can also open up all the tracks in here by hitting the little folder icon there. See, there's all my tracks that exist in my little drum folder here. Let me close it up. And it's back to normal here. So yeah, that's what your edit window looks like with uh, track folders. So uh, in closing, yeah, this is pretty much uh, all there is to using track folders. Um, anybody who's using Pro Tools for a long time knows that this is an amazing update and it's gonna make our uh, workflow so much more simpler. So I'm, I thank you Pro Tools for <laughs> releasing this. I've been waiting for this. So yeah, so if you guys like this video, uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe and also hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, I will see you guys later and uh, peace out.